the Arnold Clark Reel sale is now on. Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube and Facebook channel. I'm Peter Martin, delighted to have your company on this Wednesday. We're in the midst of the January transfer window. Lots to talk about in the company of Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson. Only one of them now still wearing Christmas presents. The other one has gone back to the tried and trusted stuff that he's had in the cupboard for the last 20 years. OK, so with Ruffy and Barry <laughs> in tow, <laughs> we should make that a competition. <laughs> Let, let's find out what we're going to be chatting about. Yeah, lots to discuss. I don't know about you, but any transfer window, even when you were growing up as a boy, um, the excitement of maybe looking at the back pages or indeed now on social media being linked with one uh, player or the other was always exciting, Barry. Yep, I love it. It's, um, it's a great time, certainly for the fans of your club is in the market constantly. Um, and you can go on it. Look, Rangers have been really active in this market. Celtic will bring in a few players, as is the rest of the Premier League. So, no, it's an exciting time for all the fans. Yeah, lots to talk about. Of course, <laughs> uh, the main one that greeted many of us, back pages, radio, television, you name it, social media. Uh, we've even had, uh, you know, polls on the story about Brendan Rodgers. Leicester City, sitting eighth, by the way, in the Premier League, um, are actually at this point... Um, possibly looking to a new manager and sacking Claude Puel. That's the story. Brendan Rodgers is the red-hot favourite. Here's the odds on this one, Ruffy. Uh, he's 2-1 to one on. Well, you can imagine, you know, that uh, how well he did with Liverpool. Uh, nearly winning the league. You can see why he would be up there. Uh, it'll be an interesting one, obviously, if there was direct contact, contact with Celtic, you know, whether, you know, he would want to go. Uh, we know that he has been a wee bit unsettled with the transfer dealings with everything that's been going on at the club. They certainly have dipped uh, of the targets that he came to Celtic for, which was Champions League football and establishing themselves in there. So I don't know if, if Leicester are the big club that he thinks he can move to. Uh, I think that would be the interesting one. Yeah, I'm glad you picked up on that, Ruffy, because one, I can't see him going. <clears throat> that's the first thing. I think he will wait till the end of the season uh, to review his situation. Um, First of all, first and foremost, Claude Puel has not been sacked yet. I mean, that can change minute by minute, hour by hour. Um, but the, the other key point here is Leicester is actually in that little batch of clubs that I think are where Brendan Rodgers will eventually move to because I don't think many people consider him a top four, top six manager anymore. I think he's got a bit of work to do to reignite the passion down south in, in his qualities. Yep, after what happened at Liverpool... Um, I know he nearly won the league, but then he had a difficult period and he gets sacked and he's come up to Celtic and to be fair, he's, he's won every trophy up here. But I, I would agree with you, I think he is in that batch below the, the top six in the English Premier League that they would be looking at. I don't think he's a, I don't think the clubs like Arsenal's or, or Chelsea's you can go on and on, I don't think they would they would be interested in him. I think that if, it, if he's going to make the next move, it will be to like a top 10 team, like a Leicester or something like that. Yeah, uh, and, and over and above that, Ruffy, um, again, <clears throat> it's all wild speculation at the moment, but if Leicester, the whole process, two and two makes uh, four eventually, if Puel were to go, um, you know, and they started to look at Brendan Rodgers, calls would be taking place to try and sound them out. That's what they do these days. The tapping still continues. My only concern with it is, if that were to happen, I'm moving the thing on 10 stages, Celtic would then be faced with a dilemma in the January transfer window, which would be a manager, never mind anything else, to try and win eight in a row. You know, So I can't see it happening. Mm -hmm. I can't see it happening uh, immediately. Uh, it will be food for thought for him, you know, that there are, if that does happen, that there are English clubs still remember what he's done. Uh, and every time we, we hear about somebody moving to England, they, they keep saying Premiership is where you want to be. You know, that's where you get tested with the best players. 
the best managers. And uh, I'm only I'm only thinking that the reason that he would go would be the disappointment of where he would have thought he was going to take Celtic when he came here. I think he's went backwards rather than forwards. And I don't think he's done enough in the European... Just out of curiosity, Ruffy, I hate to be pedantic on yeah. this, but how can you go backwards when you're still top of the table, you've won the League Cup, just, you've won every trophy going that's going, a, a and you're, you're still in the Scottish Cup domestic, and you could win the domestic league? Domestic football doesn't count. No of these English clubs. It definitely doesn't count. You have to establish yourself against European opposition and qualify for big, big European tournaments. You look, you, you touched on, the, the Barry touched on Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City... They, they don't go for domestic uh, managers. They go for managers who've won Europa Cups, who've won Champions League, yeah. who've done, have got a CV that beats nobody. Yeah. I don't think. But Brandon I hate Rogers to butt in again, but the, they're still in the Europa League and they're, they're about to play yeah, Valencia. Yes, they, they are. But you know, you keep telling me Europa clubs are wee wee. No, like the <laughs> I know. I, I'm, okay, just, so, I'm throwing it so out as a yeah, devil's no, advocate to you. A lot of Celtic fans will look and go, no, "Well, hang on no, a minute." Where, where, <laughs> when Brendan Rodgers came here and we were there at the Champions League night against Man City, Electric Celtic really handled themselves particularly well, yeah. and they were in. In that elite group that they could handle themselves, I just think from that episode they went back dramatically. And all I'm saying is, if you're going to get to a, a top club in England, you have to prove yourself at a top level. Yeah. So this six months in the Europa League is where he might actually enhance the reputation again. I take your point, Ruffy. I think there are three uh, parts to this story. First and foremost, you you can't rule out always that there's always an agent mm -hmm. throwing your manager's name or your player's name forward to everyone, yep, that right. helps you get a, a, an extra bit of money off an owner. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first thing, so I'm going to be cynical about that. The other two parts of it are out there for all the public to see, which is quite simply, Brendan Rodgers has had a pop at the board. Brendan Rodgers has criticised his players and also said you know, that, he's, you know, that he's not happy with the transfer window. So he, he's come out publicly and somewhere in the background there's been a conversation to say, look, Cam, your Jets here, you're one of the best paid managers in Great Britain. Yeah, no, I've got to agree with you. It was all rose in the garden for the first two years. <laughs> I think the summer, he would have been, I mean, the standards that he set at Celtic for the first two years, he would have been really disappointed with that transfer window. And this trans uh, transfer window, we're a couple of weeks into it. I know they made a few signings, but we spoke about it on Monday. It's only potential he signed. I thought he would have been out and spent a bit of money yeah. or get at least experienced guys in who have been about the block before. Um, but I'm sure, listen, as Ruffy mentioned a few minutes ago, every manager wants to manage at the highest level in the best league. And the best league, without a doubt, is down south in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, and with that in mind, again, Ruffy, it, it is a... As Barry mentioned there, you're looking at signings, and, and I view a lot of them as just somebody in a darkened room throwing a dart mm -hmm. onto a picture of someone. You, you know, the speculation. Agents trying to tout their players. Celtic linked with a, a possibility of James McCarthy, which has been doing the rounds for more than a few months. Um, over and above that, Yaya Touri was yesterday. Suddenly, Celtic might not be interested in him. Uh, then it's Olympiacos defender. I think his name's Omar El Abdelawi. Uh, and over and above that, Josh Maya at uh, Sunderland. So there's all these names, mm -hmm. but there's not really... McCarthy, I, I could see mm -hmm. the point, mm -hmm. you know, maybe get some Celtic fans excited, but there's nothing really that you're saying to well, yourself. That, Is that what Brendan Rodgers well, trying to build? Well that's, well, that's what I'm going to say. That's what I was trying to say, that, that Brendan Rodgers has been you know, a, a decent manager and Celtic are a massive club, bigger than these clubs that we're talking about, Leicester. Let's not kid ourselves on about that. But at the end of the day, if you're a manager, would you be rather haggling in the transfer window and trying to bring in players that half of his haven't heard and he's haggling here and you get into Leicester and somebody goes, there's 30 million going by somebody. There's 20 million going by somebody. That's when you get tested as a manager to, to identify a better quality of player without haggling on loan deals and and everything else that's going on in this window. Yeah, I'll tell you something, James McCarthy, would, I think, would be an unbelievable signing for Celtic. I think he's a, a top player. I know he's, he's had injury problems the last 18 months or so. He had a bad, I think it was a leg break, but he's a top player. Him, He would be a great signing for Celtic. Yeah, uh, over and above that, I mean, I read the uh, uh, the headline that says Jers are favourites for Adam Lallana, yeah. and I thought, right, we're now <laughs> we're now moving into overdrive here, you yeah. know, uh, because first and foremost, uh, you know, I think he is absolutely top drawer. If he uh, popped up outside Ibrox with a Rangers training top on Barry Ferguson, I would suddenly suggest Rangers should be considered 
you know, really pushing the board out to be to be in with the chance of winning the title. Yep, see if this was six, eight weeks ago, I, I know the four was mentioned and obviously Devil, but the, these two signings have happened. And now I'm beginning to believe Adam Lallana. I think he's a top, top player. If, Ra if Rangers get him, <laughs> um, they've got an even better chance, what I say, on Monday yeah. to, to obviously snatch a title away for Celtic. The guy's genuine quality. I watched him long enough in a Liverpool jersey. You, the guy's got fantastic ability, can score a goal, England international. It's difficult to get in that Liverpool team with that top three they've got just now. But he is a top, top player. If Rangers pull that off, I'll need to give them a handshake. Yeah, I'd be, would you tip them for the Champions League to win it next season? <laughs> <laughs> That's going a bit too far. <laughs> I, I'd be gobsmacked of that. I'm, I hate to you pour, know what? I, I hate to pour water on it, guys, but no, I just listen, cannot see that happening. That's 16. No. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you're laughing. You're laughing about Defoe and Davis. Listen, the yeah. Adam I don't think we're laughing at Defoe and Davis. I think Davis was was a realistic one because. He wasn't getting a game at Southampton. There's a good link. There's a great affinity between Davis and Rangers. That one made perfect sense. The Defoe <laughs> one, I think a lot of people maybe looked at it and thought, well, wait a minute, 65 grand a week. A bit you know, how much, how, it's a bit rich for Rangers. How much are they picking up here? But fair play to them. Suddenly, Steven Gerrard, and let's not forget the Steven Gerrard um, element of this, mm -hmm. he's friends with Defoe. Yep. He's been able to use, and that's what great, great players do when they're now moving to managers. They use their friendships to try and say, well, listen, come up here. Here, you'll be idolised. I mean, he's done the same. He was working with under 18s down at Liverpool, no Lallana. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking there, there might be a slight chance of getting him in. Yeah. Um, he's got a good connection with Liverpool. Lallana's been out the team for a while. He needs games. So a short loan period, I think, would be a great, a yeah. great sign and a great coup for Rangers. Yeah. No surprise that um, Rangers rejected any possible loan deal for McCrory to Dundee. A good move by Jim McIntyre, but I, I think McCrory might be well and truly in Stephen Gerrard's plan still. Yep, he wasn't at the start. He was in and out of the team, a bit part player. But in the last month before the season uh, came to the winter break, I thought he was fantastic, especially against Celtic. I mean, it takes a lot for a young boy to. to he do well in one of the games. I know myself, it takes you a few games to get into it, but I thought he was excellent. But I'm not surprised that they've rejected that. Fair play to Dundee try to get him, but I don't think uh, Stephen Gerrard would let him go. He's too, he's a big, big player for Rangers, important member of the squad. Yeah. What would you do if you were the Aberdeen captain, uh, Ruffy Graham Shinney? You're, <coughs> you know, you're in the uh, last throes of your deal there. Do you, do you try and, and look for something down south that maybe I'll give you that? nice little pay packet to, mm -hmm. to at the tail end of your career? Well, we're, we're not privy to what the wages are at Aberdeen. We're not privy to, to what he's been offered. But for him to think about it, uh, it must be some financial uh, pull to go there. I mean, Wigan aren't exactly uh, the biggest club down there. They've been in financial trouble for two or three seasons. But again, you know, it's a sorry state for us that our, our well, he is a Scotland player, yeah. uh, has decided to move from one of our top clubs to not one of the bigger clubs yeah. in England. He hasn't signed the pre-contract yeah. yet, but he's pretty close to it. But he's 27 years of age, I you know, three or four that. years down in England. Uh, th I mean, I, I think as a midfielder, 28 is your peak years, yep. Barry, am I right? Am I wrong? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. He's, th this, is his, this is his big contract. He's at an age, this will be his last big one. Um, he needs to weigh a few things up. He's Aberdeen captain. He's been a real driving force up there. Yeah. Um, but also, he's got a family, uh, a family as well. He needs to look to the future. It's a short career. Certainly, Wigan will be able to uh, treble his wages and what he's on at Aberdeen. I've no doubt about that. So he's got a lot to weigh up because, as I say, he's a real cult hero up there. Um, and he'll be a massive, massive miss to Aberdeen. But he's got to look after himself and make the right decision. Yeah, um, let's switch our attention to Kilmarnock. Uh, they revealed losses of just over 180,000. They probably would have uh, made a slight profit, Ruffy, had they put in various uh, you know, transfer deals here and there that have helped them <coughs> along the way. Um, but there's no doubt about it, Killy fans are responding with the season mm. ticket sales. They are up big style. Uh, and over and above that... Um, they're contemplating maybe uh, putting a new pitch down next season. I think that will be Steve Clark saying to him, look, can't keep playing on this surface. Yeah, I think they had discussed it. I think it was last year and they were going to give it another year to see what the <coughs> financial implications were. I think, yeah, I think if you did a survey with the Commander boys, they would want to play in grass rather than Astro. 
and uh, it looks as if that's the way they're going ahead. And I think most of the other players in the, the league will accept that, you know, because I think we all agree that that's the surface you want to play on. Yeah, I think it would be a good move for them. Kelly used to have a good surface. The problem with it has always been uh, that when they had uh, the grass and then everybody who had to have in the Premier League under soil heating, I think the neighbours were complaining because every time it went on, you thought there was a you know a nuclear testing going on. <laughs> it's, I, I tell you, it was a great pitch. I used to love playing down in Kilmarnock. Um, Great surface, it was it was like a bowling green every time we played down there. Uh, I'm sure Stevie Clark will be pushing to get back to grass. Um, for what he's done at that club, I mean the transformation, I know you're saying they're 180 grand worse off, but that's not much. Yeah. Go and give him a bit of money, he's, the, the transformation in that club over the last 18 months has been unbelievable. It's interesting to see if he can add any other little surprise signings, Ruffy, mm -hmm. uh, at Kilmarnock, because Let's not forget, we're all, you know, bumping our gums night in, night out across Scotland, talking about Celtic and Rangers in this uh, race. Kelly and Aberdeen are in there. They might not win it, mm -hmm. but they'll certainly take a few scalps along the way. Yeah, and they have been the surprise package this year. I don't think any of us thought there would be, what was it, a couple of points, three points off the top of the league. You know, it's been a tremendous effort, and that's why the, the sort of uh, the, the loss is there, because he's brought in a better quality of player, better quality of player costs you more on wages, but I'm sure the Kilmarnock fans have been more than happy with what they're seeing and we can see by the attendances that they're getting at home and particularly compared to what it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, with regards to managerial appointments, <coughs> uh, Stephen Presley back in uh, a manager's chair at Carlisle United, um, he's put himself about just to try and keep himself in there to try and prove that he has what it takes. Yeah, he has a philosophy. Uh, I think a lot is, you know, try to wonder what it is, but he has a mindset of where he's going. He, he talks a good game. He has a philosophy of what he wants at a club and it hasn't worked in a couple of clubs he's been at. Who's to say it wouldn't work there? Yeah, OK, we wish him well. A couple of things to talk about before we uh, finish, guys. Um, obviously, one of them, Ruffy, concerns you, um, Aidan Fitzpatrick. Um, Norwich sniffing, suggestions that Rangers are sniffing this young lad. Um, dare I suggest to you, is he the type of person that really needs to stay at Partick Thistle and just maybe get a good year under his belt where possibly you as a club um, could benefit? How good is he, first of all, and, and where does he play? Well, fortunately for Thistle, he's been there since he was 12 years of age. Uh, Jerry Britton's been there for that space of time. He saw the young boy develop. He believes that there's another couple of years in him yet, you know, to to mature, you know, but nowadays these big clubs are coming in and offering silly money and uh, you have to obviously take into consideration the player's future as well, but sometimes money just outrides everything that, that's going about. There hasn't been any bid, you know, I can tell you that. And yeah. uh, But if somebody was to bid something like <laughs> 600,000, I'm sure that uh, yeah. you'd be talking to them. But yeah. the, the, the young player is important where he comes from, you know, where he thinks he's going. But again, as we know, agents have got a big part to play in this. Yeah. Has he played a lot of games? He's I played see. five games. Uh, I, I just hope, for his sake, that he gets the right guidance and people yeah. round about him obviously put him in the right direction because it's, it's a difficult one at that age when clubs come calling, agents see the pound signs. I just hope for his career that he makes the right decision. As Ruffy just says, he's, I didn't, I've no, known much about him. He's played five games. Sometimes it's better to stay stay there and develop another year or two. And if he's got the ability, the, <coughs> the clubs are going to come calling in the next couple of years. How good is he? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen He's not been on the park long enough. I don't think he's had enough games, you know, to show everybody. What he's, I think he went to a tournament, an under-18 tournament, and he was a standout of all the players that played in that tournament. And I think that's why some clubs have caught on to him. He's not been given a long run. And as Barry keeps saying, unless you're... A young player at 17 and you're not going to really feel comfortable in a first team till you've done 10, 15, 20 games mm. till you feel that bit of confidence. <laughs> so it would be unfair to talk, sort of a judge him at the level that we're at. OK. Uh, just to finish, some good news for Hearts fans. Um, Uche Ikpiezu uh, looks as if he's on the mend as well. He hadn't kicked a ball since October. I think he picked up a, a foot injury, which was a bitter blow for Hearts at that time. I think the, the back end fell out of their uh, title aspirations because they were top of the league at one point, Barry. And I, I think the injury uh, to Ikpiezu and Naismith really was a body blow. 
Yep, he was a massive player and when they lost him, it was a big dent to where they were at the top of the league. He was a big part, the way they played. So I'm sure Craig Levine will be delighted because now he's getting easy back. They two were creating a good partnership together. So Hearts will be delighted that he's back fit and ready to go. Yeah, um, we got the derby dates confirmed uh, yesterday, Ruffy. Of course, um, you know, the end of March and April for the Glasgow and the Edinburgh derbies. You know, by the time this month closes, I think we're going to get a clear indication of <coughs> where the natural order lies in Edinburgh. I'm curious to see what business Craig Levine and uh, Neil Lennon are able to complete because that's going to be an interesting battle. Well, as far as Neil Lennon is concerned, he's looking at a striker. He doesn't think his strikers are fulfilling what they did last year, you know, and he thinks if he can identify somebody to come in right away, as a lot of clubs want, then that's where we'll get the team back on the rails again. OK, uh, lots to talk about. You can give us your view on it uh, at PLZ Soccer on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash PLZ Soccer. And of course, you can always comment at the bottom of the show on YouTube as well. It's uh, January. It's that time when Barry gets up and he's excited as every player is linked with Rangers. And uh, don't forget on Friday, uh, we'll hear Barry's reaction to Messi wearing a dark blue shirt and running out at Ibrox. You couldn't rule it out, could you? Uh, Thanks to Ruffy. Thanks to Barry Ferguson. Join us if you can tomorrow. Gordon Smith will be with us on our YouTube show. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And it all starts at 6 o'clock. We'll see you then. The Arnold Clark Real Sale is now on. Oh, it's going to be about this. the transfer window. Oh.